H2K Infosys provides world class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job oriented training, hands on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, rubber syllabus, one time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Welcome to another video with H2K Infosys. So in this particular session, we are going to see the concept of the static and non-static for variables and methods. Now, as far as the concept of static and non-static keywords to be used, it not only is used for variables and methods, but in some instances, it can be used for classes also. In this particular session, my example will be restricted to the usage of the static and the non-static uh, keywords for variables and methods. Now, as we have also, uh, <clears throat> uh, rather, as we know that we can also implement the concept of static and non-static for classes, but that particular session will be taken at a later point of time. But at this point of time, I can generally say that you know the we can have static classes or non-static classes if it is part of nested class or nested classes rather <clears throat> so in this particular session uh, i will basically define some concepts on the static and non-static non behavior or non-static or static keyword rather and the examples that i will basically show you is for the variables and methods using the static and non-static part so let us understand the concept first of all. So the concept of static and non-static is to be used for global variables, methods, and to an extent on class files. Now, as I have already mentioned, you can use the concept of static and non-static for class files if it is part of your nested classes concept. And the session right now uh, will not explain you about what is a nested class that will be a separate session by itself as far as methods uh, that we have used until now uh, we have used uh, public static void methods i will restrict to public static uh, uh, void methods still as part of example but in this particular session i will also show you how to create public non-static methods and uh, we have seen that global variables can be also static and non-static okay uh, and uh, how to use the static and non-static global variables inside those methods that is what we are going to see so going forward now for declaring global variables or methods or class files as static we need to use the keyword called static similarly if you want to declare a global variable or a method or a class file as non-static we need not have any keyword for it that means i want to basically specify the fact that non-static does not have any keyword if we do not write the keyword called static automatically it means that particular global variable or that method or that particular class file is non-static now rules for global variables now if a global variable is static then it can be used in static methods and non-static methods similarly if a global variable is non-static it can be used in non-static methods only so this rule that is non-static global variables can be used in non-static methods only is a stringent rule okay then we have rules for methods too so if a method is static it can use only static global variables and that's a stringent rule again similarly if a method is non-static it can be used both in static and non-static global variable it can use both static and non-static global variables so obviously the stringent rules that have been defined for global variables and methods obviously can be broken and that is what i have given as part of the note however these rules that is static methods can use static global variables only or non-static global variables 
can be used in non-static methods only can be broken and that's where the concept of object comes which is part of your object oriented programming so the concept of object will be taken later on but let's first use the rule in the examples that i'm going to show so let's see the example i already have the eclipse open in front of me so i'll create a new project right click on the project explorer new choose new option and go to choose the project click on that choose java project and click on next i'll create a new session called session 21 click on next button and click on the finish button i don't want to change the perspectives click on no so in this particular project called session 21 under the source folder i am going to create a package so right click on the source go to new click on the package option i'll call the package as static non static and in inside this particular package called static or non static i am going to create a class file by the name of let's say cars call of the main method now in this particular cars class the class file is called cars so in this car class I'm going to define the properties of the car class. So properties of the car class can be the global variables of the cars class, the methods present inside the cars class and the constructors of the cars class. Now we have not, we are not going to discuss about constructor in this particular session, but yes, I will define two properties at least of the cars class. That is the global variables of the car class and the methods of the car class. Please remember this particular thing as a note. Every class will have properties and the properties of any class can be your global variables, the methods present in that particular class and the constructors. So let us define a static and a non-static global variable. I will restrict myself to uh, the access modifier or specifier called as default. Now for default access specifier, there's no keyword use. I'm not going to define any other access specifiers like public, private, and protected for this particular session. When I take up the concept of encapsulation, then I'll take up the concept of your access modifiers or specifiers. So I'll define a <clears throat> default static global variable, excuse me, let's say of uh, string type, let's say principal manufacturer. Now. Okay, so this is a default non-static global variable. For non-static, we do not use any keywords. Okay, now how do we decide to define the properties of the car class? Now, cars will have certain functionalities or functions which are called as methods also. So, a functionality of the car can be the, the anti-braking system. The functionality of the car can be... Uh, to accelerate the functionality of the car can be putting a brake similarly what can be the property of a car in terms of global variables a car can belong to a particular principal manufacturer like honda or toyota etc <coughs> similarly a car can have a model from a particular principal manufacturer for example toyota has uh, different uh, models like Innova or <coughs> Toyota Camry etc. So the principal manufacturer and the model can be put as part of the global variables whereas the anti-braking system or the acceleration part or the braking part can be part uh, put as a method or function of the cars class. So that is how we decide you know the properties of any class and also it, it is decided on the project uh, that we have got. So right now, principal manufacturer is part of your non-static default string type global variable and I'll create a static st 
string type global variable called as model there is nothing but the model of the car okay so definitely principal manufacturer variableizes and the model depends on the principal manufacturer and i'll also create one third uh let's say non-static uh global variable of integer type that is the price the price is dependent obviously on the model and the model depends on the principal manufacturer so price differs so that is why price also has been kept as part of your global variables because it is variableizing so a non-static integer type global variable called price next thing is that i will define so this these becomes the uh, properties of the cars class that is nothing but the global variables so i can put these as global variables out here for reference Similarly, I can create the methods or the functions of the cars class. So any car will have this particular function like, the, like your anti-braking system. So I'll create a, a static method and I'll restrict myself to uh, public access specifier at this point of time until unless I take this session on encapsulation. And uh, return type can be anything. Uh, you can define any return type. But I'll restrict, uh, I will just create at this particular session the void return types and I'll create a static method with a void return type and let's say it is called as ABS, anti-breaking system. Okay, and I can just define a simple CISO statement stating that cards have uh, abs to make it safer during rains so that it does not skid when breaks are applied suddenly and that is actually the abs does similarly i will also create a non-static global variable sorry non-static method so for non-static there is no keyword see for static you have a keyword called static out here for non-static there is no keyword so it will be public non-static void return type and I'll call the method as accelerate. And I'll just give a simple CISO statement, I'll hard code at this point of time, just to show you the uh, rules that have been set for static and non-static for methods as well as for your global variables. So I'll just define that cars accelerate or cars needs initial acceleration to move forward. and acceleration differs from one car to another car i know that this is this all statement is long but that is what this particular accelerate function does in any car so i'll create the third method which can be let's say a non-static method again with the public access specifier so public void uh, the third method method can be the break breaks or function called breaks out here and i can just put out a simple hard coding stuff by using the print talent command cards have breaks 
to stop or to stop the car or to stop it under under uh, difficult situations so that is what brakes does and this is what i have written out here so whatever the body part of these three methods that defines the functionality of those functions abs acceleration and brakes now let us go back to the concept now i will basically define the rules out here okay based on whatever is discussed in this particular session static variables can be used in static methods and non static methods so let us use that first <clears throat> 